As general manager George Payton prepares the 2022 NFL Draft, which direction could the Denver Broncos be heading next week when the team is on the clock? We ask questions that we would present to George Payton in today's pre-draft press conference, and we share some Broncos country fan response. You get that and much more in today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back into a brand new episode, Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown NFL Network, your team every day from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, joined alongside by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. Both of us, we cover the Denver Broncos for the Lockdown Network and 9 News. Broncos country, thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. We appreciate you so much all throughout Broncos country. Happy Friday wherever you are at. Hey, Sarah, my friend. Uh, General Manager George Payton is going to meet with the media here today for his pre-draft press conference, and there will be a ton of questions that will be thrown out his way. So you and I thought it'd be a great idea if we could ask George a question today, what would we ask him and what would Broncos fans ask him as well? Now, we all know going into this, whatever we would ask or whatever anybody asks, we're not going to get a real legitimate answer in a sense as to what the Broncos truly plan on doing. That's the fun part about it because general manager George Payton is very tight lipped, but first we got to take a look at the Broncos draft overview with how many picks that they have and you know, where could they go? I mean, what are their needs or do they just build on depth? Well, George Payton, Cody, he fought for that ninth pick and he's been saying to the media, we have nine picks, yada, yada. We have nine picks. I mean, he said it multiple times and for, for the longest time, everyone's like, is George Payton okay? Like the Broncos official account even tweeted out the team has eight picks, but he keeps on saying they have nine. And and ultimately it looks like, I don't know if he like won a dispute or what the situation was, but the Broncos do have an additional seventh round pick that they didn't previously report when they were talking about what draft picks they have to utilize. So starting with pick number 64 and then going to 75. I really like that right there, Cody, those two picks within 10 of each other. And then you've got another selection at number 96, all on day two of the draft, all in the top 100 after the Russell Wilson trade to still have three top 100 picks is absolutely huge. And then you turn around and you got 115, 116, 145, 206, 232 and 234 and those last two picks are those two seventh round picks the broncos still have uh they still have picks in rounds five six and seven because of trades that were made so not all these picks even belong originally to the broncos which is kind of fun but man george payton he likes to have darts and he's got nine of them to start with no, he does. And and one thing we've always seen, too, because I remember when George Payton came in, one thing he said is, you know, if we can go into a draft having 10 or more picks, we feel like we're going to be in a very good spot. We got enough flexibility to move up, to trade back or to just build depth there. Like these are the answers I think that we are going to get. And I want to do like, let's do a bingo card right now. For anyone that's listening to the show, when George Payton speaks today, I want somebody to keep a tally of how many times that he mentions the word flexibility. There, I, like I said, too, if I want to see that. Make sure you tweet us at Cody Work NFL at Sir Benger. I locked down Broncos with your responses to how many he actually does there. But, you know, one question I think that everyone's looking into as well is like, you know, for Denver, are they looking at biggest needs for the team or are they looking at best player available with a chance to, you know, hey, maybe it's not at a position of need, but maybe this best player can contribute in some way, shape, or form and be a depth player and maybe a future starter. Like, in your opinion, how do you feel like the Broncos might be leaning with this question right here? Well, I think they have to approach it with the best player available mentality. And I think keeping in mind positional, uh, whatever you want to call it, like, I mean, it's like positional strength or uh, people like to put certain value on certain positions, which I agree with based on the way that guys are getting paid this day. So I guess it would be just positional value in general. And really there's stronger positions than other. Like we've talked about this before last year, the Patrick Sertan selection came after it looked like the Broncos had very effectively solidified that cornerback room. The Javante Williams pick came after they kept Melvin Gordon, despite there were some rumors, remember last year they could trade or cut him. And then they signed Mike Boone. So then you'd go ahead and draft Javante. Then you draft Quinn Miners when in the last couple of years, I mean, they drafted Dalton Reisner, Lloyd Cushenberry, signed Graham Glasgow. So 
and then the Baron Browning pick. You already had AJ or Alexander Johnson, excuse me. He doesn't like to be called AJ. Alexander Johnson, Josie Jewell at inside linebacker. Then you go ahead and pick Baron Browning. And those were the Broncos' top picks in last year's draft, none of which seemingly addressed a huge need on the team, right? I mean, if, if we were looking back at how everything played out at the time, those all could have been considered borderline luxury selections by by depending on the eye of the beholder. So I think you go with the best player available. I think reaching for need, that's for the mock draft machines and, and, and that's for you know the, the algorithms and whatnot. I think George Payton is a wise general manager and team builder. I think he's going to go best player available, Cody. Well, we did see a recent report of the top-ranked GMs according to various NFL media and some executives out there, and it was listed like George Payton was on there because it, he only had a first year, right? So they said, hey, he's not in this top 10, but we believe he will be depending on what he does here. He just doesn't have enough time in as a GM here. I mean, obviously you could say like it was a home run first year in terms from a draft and, and I'd say setting the stage for your roster standpoint for George Payton. And I do agree. I think we'll see a lot of the same, to be honest with you here, Sarah, in 2022. I don't think that the Broncos are really going to go and stretch their hands out for like a need. I think that, hey, we're going to take the best player available. And this, if it so happens to help fulfill maybe a potential need that could arise, you know, so be it. I do think the luxury approach is where we're going to see George Payton go again, but it's not going to be luxury for the sake of luxury. It's luxury with the sake of knowing that there will be value added to this roster, value added to this team as well. So I am stoked about that. I think there's going to be a lot of things to look at here. We're excited to see how it all falls out for George Payton, the Denver Broncos. Could they maybe make an appearance into day one of the NFL draft? It seems very unlikely right now, but then again, anything is possible according to what Kevin Garnett would say back in the NBA Finals days with the Boston Celtics. But outside of that, too, we're going to get into the portion coming up here in just a moment of Broncos country where Sarah Bedinger and I are going to share the questions that we personally would ask George Payton in today's pre-draft press conference. Then we'll share some Broncos country thoughts coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about Shady Rays. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that gives you the features of $200 sunglasses for a fraction of the price. We've already had several listeners of Lockdown Broncos who've purchased their Shady Rays glasses and have loved them and expressed that feedback on Twitter and in the YouTube comment section. That means polarized lenses, well-constructed, durable frames, and premium high-end finishes. Also, something that you won't find anywhere else is Shady Rays Insane Protection Program. Shady Rays includes lost and broken protection on every pair, and they will send you a brand new pair. If you lose them, no matter what happened, give them a try, and if you don't love them, you'll pay nothing. It's as simple as that, plus 10 mils are donated to fight hunger in America when you shop with Shady Rays, and exclusively for our listeners of Lockdown Broncos, head to ShadyRays.com and use code LOCKDOWN, that's one word, LOCKDOWN, to get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That's code LOCKDOWN for the best deal of the season, 50% off two or more pairs of Shady Rays sunglasses backed by over 150,000 verified five-star reviews. And our good friends over there, BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all the betting stats and sports information today. And you can find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sport wagering information from live betting, playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or check it out on your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action at BetOnline.net. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, Sarah, as we jump into the second half action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, once again, a major shout-out, mile-high salute to everybody in Broncos country for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. It would mean the world to us if you would smash that like button, and also make sure you hit that subscribe or follow button on your favorite audio podcasting platform or here on YouTube if you have not done so already. We appreciate you, Broncos country, for listening to us every single day, and we love the insight and the feedback that we get from you, the thoughts that you share about the team that you root for on Sundays. You get that here on Lockdown. On Broncos. All right, Sarah. So as George Payton prepares to meet with the media here today, we are going to ask him our questions here. Now I'll let you start things off here. Like if you could ask George Payton one question leading up in this pre-draft process, what is one question that you would ask him? I'm very excited to hear what you have on the table here for General George. I, you know, I would love to get like a rapid fire type of thing going first. So this is just, this is my desires list, Cody. So like if we could get a rapid fire thing to get him to like slip into an answer that he wouldn't otherwise say and like ask him a bunch <laughs> of fast questions like what's your favorite color? What's your favorite food? Are you going to make a pick on Thursday night and see if he says yes, you know, like, you know, to see if he would slip up there. I know we talk about that. He's probably not going to do that. But uh, even if even if that's not the case and we're not going to get to see rapid fire George Payton, my number one question for him is how much does the addition of Russell Wilson 
impact the overall draft strategy? Because we know, okay, well, yeah, the obvious is you no longer have the ninth pick. You no longer have the 40th pick. But how does that shape the rest of what you do? Does it ramp up your urgency to surround him with more talent, like in the weapons department? Does it make you more aggressive in terms of maybe looking to trade up into the first round? How does the addition of Russell Wilson help you uh, or maybe just affect in general the way that you approach the NFL draft? I would love to know the difference between like last year, his first draft as a GM, and this year, his first draft with a franchise QB. I think that's a fair point. I would be very interested to hear that. And I wonder, and hopefully somebody does wise enough to ask that question as well here today. My question would be along the lines of what goes into planning for a draft when you have a mostly solidly intact roster? Like I feel like right now, Sarah, the Broncos roster, I think is solid. And I think it's very intact for the most part. So how do you approach a draft, especially when you don't have a round one pick and you have a late end round two pick? How do you prepare for the draft? I'd be very intrigued to hear George's thought process on this. But, you know, it's not just George Payton, too, Sarah. I think one of the things that Broncos country, and I think a lot of people, even media members, sometimes forget, George Payton, look, yes, he makes the call. He makes the final decision. But this is an ultimate collaborative effort. And obviously, collaboration is one word we've heard circulating throughout the Broncos practice facility and team headquarters. Collaboration is key. And George Payton, even going back to the behind the Broncos uh, building up towards the draft last year, we had saw that, hey, he asked input on what this coach thinks or what this scouting, this person, this area scout thinks about this player like they go they go through and they get through all this feedback and they also you know one thing we've seen for George Payton he is boots on the ground everywhere he goes to pro days he's been to pro days like they've already been on the ground working here sir so for me I wonder how much of that really goes into it for George Payton uh, that's one of my questions are there any other questions that you would ask George personally outside of maybe the Russell Wilson one well, first of all, I love the the question you thought up too, and and you make a great point. I mean, how do you approach a draft with a an, a roster that, like I've been kind of saying, you know, in my writing and things that I've been doing like that. Like, if there was a game on Sunday, I feel like you could put out a pretty good, you know, starting eleven on both sides. So I think that's a great point, and I think it would be a great question. My other question would be, what do you take from the twenty twenty one draft? Obviously, George Payton won that award for the best draft. What do you take from that draft in terms of hey, we did this really well last year. Like you mentioned, maybe the collaboration is something that they kind of build upon uh, in a way. Obviously, with Nathaniel Hackett, collaboration we know is a big thing for him. But what is what are some other things that you could really build on that worked in that 2021 draft? And then on the other side of the spectrum, you know, maybe looking at some of the picks that didn't hit right away or that you maybe don't feel as good about now a year later, what would you improve upon from last year's class in terms of, well, we really liked what we did here, but we took a little bit of a different strategy in this aspect. And I know they're not going to get up there and badmouth any players that they just drafted last year, but maybe just strategy wise, you know, how would you change what you did based on last year's draft and what went well, what didn't go well? I think that's one thing that's always good to evaluate no matter what you're doing is what went well, what didn't go well, and how can we make it better uh, and obviously improving on the best draft, as at least as voted by a certain <laughs> group of people, um, that would be awesome for this year. So I'm interested to know the answer to that question and whatever else uh, you might have to ask, Cody, because I think that there's a lot of more, a lot more that George Payton could share with the fans as well. Yeah, no spot on there too. And I think one thing would be interesting to find out, like how does George Payton and the scouting department, when they're looking at the draft and they're preparing their board, when they see obviously because the AFC West, they're going to have picks before Denver does in a sense here. How, when you look at what picks your division rivals make, does that change maybe your strategy or does it alter maybe how you wanted to draft initially when your draft pick is coming up? I wonder if that is a huge part in kind of what happens. Or do you look at like other contenders inside the AFC and maybe make that same kind of decision? Like how does it adjust a little bit more for you? I think that would be a very interesting dynamic to find out because I do think something like this does happen. I'm, I think it's in league circles and obviously NFL team war rooms is they look at maybe somebody that they really wanted or somebody that like we talked about in yesterday's episode of the show, worst case scenario draft picks. They look at that in a pick. I was like, Oh no. Okay. Hey, you know, that's a great pick by them. How do we counter this? Like, do they look at that or do they just focus on themselves? I think that is an important question that I would just love to know George Payton's thoughts 
on that subject matter as is. But you know what, Sarah? Broncos country actually sent in some of the questions that they would ask George Payton as well in the pre-draft press conference happening today. We're going to get to that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell listeners of the show about our good friends over there at Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar that is out there on the market today. Each bar contains over 130 calories, 17 grams of protein. That's the big number, 17 grams of protein and only four grams of sugar. They have nine amazing original flavors, plus the occasional limited time flavor on a month to month basis. They're the puff flavors, marshmallow covered in 100% milk chocolate. Fantastic and delicious to take a bite into. And I, a secret that I always want to give people that buy a box of Bilt Bar, put your Bilt Bar in the fridge for one hour and then eat it as well and see how it changes the texture or the taste of what you look for in a protein bar. And it's crazy too because the bars taste legitimately like a candy bar, but they're healthy for you as well. They give you a little bit of extra push throughout your day if you need so with all the macros that come with it. And you can get your hands on a box of Built Bar today by going to Built.com. And when you go to checkout, make sure you use promo code LOCK15. That's one word, LOCK, the number one five, all together, LOCK15. And that's going to get you 15% off your next order at Built.com. The NFL draft is approaching. We are just under a week away from when the Denver Broncos will potentially be on the clock with pick number 64. We've gone through and we've asked George Payton our pre-draft press conference questions. And now Broncos country have sent theirs into us on Twitter and our Broncos community. And Sarah, we have a couple of good responses right here. I'm going to start things off here with John Tater. He says, what is the most important position to have quality depth on both sides of the ball? Let's say you're George Payton here. What is your answer, in your own opinion, Sarah, to this question? I'd be very interested to know what George Payton says. I think the first ones that come to my mind are obviously offensive line and wide receiver. And I think over the course of a season, you have to have depth at both positions. And we saw that for the Denver Broncos, certainly last year, if not the last couple of years. I mean, season-ending injury for Cortland Sutton in 2020. You had the long injury for Jerry Judy last year, KJ Hamler. And then on the offensive line, the Broncos have just been, I mean, it's been one injury after another on that side of the ball, hasn't it? So I think it would be one of those two positions offensively for me. Defensively, I think you got to have pass rush depth and you got to have depth in the secondary, specifically yeah. at cornerback. So I think those would be my picks, Cody. And if I had to sift it down to just one on either side, I would say you got to have depth on the offensive line and you got to have depth at corner. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think on that one? No, I, I agree with you. I, I was I would have gone on defense. I would have gone edge rusher or cornerback. I think those are the two most important positions because your edge rushers really impact getting to the quarterback, throwing the timing off. And if you don't have cornerbacks or quality cornerbacks, as we saw the Broncos, remember when they were down to like practice squad players in one of those games against the Las Vegas Raiders, you know, Michael Ojemudia balled out in the game, but they had, I forgot what his name was, but he was like, he came off the street and started in a game for them uh, on the opposite side there. Parnell Motley. Parnell Parnell Motley. Motley. Yes. <laughs> yes, it was. It was Parnell Motley. Trivia. In situations Trivia like that, that is a worst case to be in. And I remember going to training camp back in 2018 for the Broncos, and I just remember like Chris Harris Jr. was there. You know, I think Bradley Roby was still, if I'm not mistaken. I, I actually was it, but yeah, Tremaine Brock there. And they only had like five cornerbacks during training camp. And I was like, and Tremaine, Tremaine Brock was not practicing because he was banged up. And I was like, these guys need some help at corner. And I look at wide receiver. There's 15 guys at receiver. I'm like, oh gosh, better hope these guys stay healthy. It was a uh, dire straits for the Broncos at cornerback a couple years ago, especially in training camp. And I do think it's important to have depth in the secondary and an edge rusher. I have no qualms about the offensive line. I think that's super important as well. Uh, but yeah, no, those are my thoughts on that, Sarah. Uh, those are spot on. And absolutely. That's you bring up names like that. It just reinforces that Ooh. point. I feel right. So, I, and I like uh, Parnell Molly. Don't get me wrong. But I, yeah, yeah. As a starter due, was not ready. Right. All due respect to Parnell Molly, who started in an NFL game when I never could ever do that in my life. So all due respect to him. Um, Ricardo Alvarez, a great question here. And interested to know your thoughts on this one first, Cody, because I have my own thoughts, but what's more important in the draft finding depth, or a starter? That's a good question. Ooh, that's a tough one because, you know, I think it depends on where you're at as an organization, right? Like if you're if you're a team that has a top five draft pick, then probably you want to find someone that's going to be a starter. You know, you want to draft someone who's going to come in day one. And ideally, I think a lot of people in the top 20, top 25 look at first round picks as starters. I think you can maybe make the argument that the back end of the first round, you know, you can make the argument some of those guys could start or probably would start. But then it's like, hey, they also may be rotation guys because those guys on the back end, for the most part of the NFL draft, are 
teams that were in the playoffs that already had like a really good roster as is. So I, I think you really got to look at that top 15 here. And obviously for Denver, they're not picking in the top 15 this year. They did last year. They got a really great cornerback, in my opinion, Patrick Sertan came in and look, he didn't start on the outside row. He started in a dime. So basically it was Kyle Fuller and Bryce Callahan really starting in the base package last season. So he necessarily himself didn't start week one officially, but I think that it's important. Like if you can find a guy, Sarah, that can start, like if you're looking for depth, you want to bring in a guy that you feel like at some point can start for your team. That's my firm belief as a GM, if I were in those operating shoes. But then again, like I said, it, me speaking on behalf of the Denver Broncos here would be so much more different than me speaking on behalf of, let's say, the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Detroit Lions teams that you know are in the rebuilding phase right now of their teams. Denver's simply not in that stage. So I think that's how it would apply to me looking at Denver. Uh, but I do want to transition now. Like, here's something. All of Broncos country, this is a question that they've asked George Payton or that they would ask him today. What is your plan, George? And I guarantee you George Payton's answer here, Sarah, would be the opposite of anything that you all think because that's exactly what George Payton does. We've talked about it on the show. He is so tight-lipped. Nothing comes out of that building. And I like that. To be honest with you, Sarah, like I don't know how you feel about this personally, but as a media member, I like to be surprised. Like We were all legitimately surprised last year with the pick what the Broncos decided to do. And I kind of like that because it's like, you're not going into a draft saying, okay, I already know who the pick is going to be. All right, here we go. You know, and then you have time to talk yourself into it. When you're surprised by it, you're like, okay, whoa, let me process this for a moment. I like that more. Yeah, I like that more as well, Cody. And I think that that's exactly what we're probably going to see from George Payton. I don't know if it'll necessarily be the opposite all the time because then teams could start to be like, oh, well, he just does the opposite of what he <laughs> what he says, you know, and, and teams do listen to this kind of stuff. Like there's probably an intern for every team dedicated to, Hey, I want you to listen to so-and-so's press conference on this day, this day, you know, load up on the press conferences, hear what they say, take notes, give us your notes. Um, because like we alluded to in the previous segment, you know, what are you, what are you, how, how much are you paying attention to what division rivals are doing? I think a lot of teams are now going to be paying attention to what the Broncos are doing because the draft is a lot about Remember last year, this, this situation is, is one that I think is really important. Last year, the Miami Dolphins really telegraphed their interest in Javante Williams. I think everybody knew yeah. that they wanted to take him at the top of the second round. So what did George Payton do? He hopped one pick in front of his old buddy, Chris Greer, and made a trade <laughs> with the Atlanta Falcons and got Javante Williams. And those, that's the danger of being super transparent or giving information to certain sources, which is why I think it's been so important that George Payton, by the way, how did he keep a Russell Wilson trade under wraps for weeks? That <sighs> seems like the most impossible thing to, to even potentially do in today's NFL, but I think it's absolutely going to be tight lipped. I think George Payton, uh, this will be another thing for the bingo card that you mentioned. How many times do people in Broncos country tweet out, George Payton said everything while also saying nothing. You know, that that's going to be a very popular tweet on Friday or today, this afternoon when George Payton speaks. So so just listen for that. Listen for that and put it on the bingo card. Maybe even put it five slots in a row so you can, you can write it down every time it pops up on your timeline. You know, uh, George Payton said nothing while saying everything or said everything while saying nothing. I, I, I think can't wait. Exactly how it is. The yeah, same cliches too. that we get every year. I'm excited for this whole bingo card challenge and make sure you tweet us on Twitter using hashtag locked on Broncos tag Sarah Bettinger at Sarah Bettinger tag me at Cody work NFL with your bingo tally card on today's pre-draft press conference for general manager George Payton. But now the Denver Broncos and George Payton prepare for the NFL draft next week we're gonna have complete recap we're gonna have complete build up plus looking forward to monday's episode of the show it is our final mock draft for the denver broncos sarah and i will make the picks exclusively and we'll debate and we'll go back and forth on them you get that here on the locked on broncos podcast